The West Indies under Clive Lloyd toured in February 1975 and dominated the drawn first test match, which saw the redoubtable Viv Richards top scoring with a stunning 151. They were such a formidable West Indian team. I think to a great extent um, we were very nervous when we started playing them um, because the names are so big. There was uh, Fredericks, Richards, Kalicharan, Lloyd, Murray, uh, and uh, everyone, Roberts. Andy Roberts uh, was the fastest at that time, I think, uh, in world cricket. And then there was uh, other bowlers like uh, Keith Boyce, uh, uh, Van Ben Holder and Bernard Julian to back up. So it, it was a good pace, pace attack. Sri Lanka played most impressively in the second encounter, passing the West Indies' modest tally of 119 for the loss of only one wicket, with Anura Tenakon and opener Ranjit Fernando carrying all before them. Tenakon recorded a memorable hundred and Fernando an accomplished half century. When we went to the test at the Oval, Tony Opata, in his uh, first spell of bowling, just rattled the, uh, the West Indians and we had them reeling at 50 out of 5 wickets and we ultimately got them out for uh, 190. The West Indies were caught on a rain affected pitch. One side was badly uh, moist and affected, and uh, I think Opata was able to exploit that. And uh, then when it came to our turn to bat, we uh, ended up getting 300 plus runs. And um, it was a great satisfaction for me to bat together with Anura. We had a very good second wicket stand, and uh, we laid the foundation for uh, Sri Lanka to get that total. There was Anura Tendakon once again, master of himself. Uh, on the overall pitch, batting extremely well. When it came to our turn to bat, we got something like 300 runs. And uh, perhaps my 100 contributed to, to making that total. And we were able to put the West Indies under pressure, which uh, no one thought, uh, dreamt that we could do. I played forward. I thought I had got in the middle of the bat to see I was caught at cow point. And when I l looked at my bat, I don't know how it happened. I was holding the wrong face of the bed. <laughs> and the ball went to cover point. One of those things that had happened. Uh, but of course they came out of it in their usual style by attacking and uh, in the second innings uh, they, they really got some uh, good runs and got it very aggressively. Uh, but uh, the fact that we put pressure on the West Indies uh, gave us a lot of satisfaction. Uh, all in all, that again had given us a huge impetus before we went to the World Cup in 1935. Sri Lanka took part in the inaugural World Cup tournament in England in 1975, competing in the strongest group with the eventual winner, the West Indies, and the runners-up, Australia. It was really uh, one of the highlights of uh, Sri Lanka cricket because this is the first time Sri Lanka was going on to play on the world stage and uh, there was a lot of preparation and uh, we had coaches like... Uh, uh, Laddy Outskun, Bertie Vijay Singh, who did a wonderful job uh, in that camp in uh, uh, this uh, Radhal, and uh, also Raja Vikram Singh, who did our training. We had about a uh, week or 10 days uh, prior to the World Cup to play a few practice games there. Uh, but unfortunately for us, I think those practice games were not very competitive games. Uh, the clubs that were pitted against us uh, didn't afford much competition. And that really wasn't the ideal preparation when you were uh, sort of facing an international uh, tournament. The Sri Lankan board uh, sent the team rather early, and uh, uh, but again, finances uh, had been the problem. So we had very, very uh, sort of sparse sort of accommodation in those early days. And in fact, even did our practices on open public parks. Sri Lanka's first match in the inaugural World Cup tournament was against the West Indies. We moved to uh, Manchester to play this uh, uh, first game and uh, the weather was entirely different from sunny London. We went to very cold the weather there and uh, just were bundled out for 80 odd runs and um, that was uh, basically a disaster as uh, our beginning of the World Cup was concerned. When we went for the Australian game we were uh, determined to prove that we also could play some good cricket, I think. Uh, that was the motivating factor. We made complete amends by uh, our second game, where we uh, uh, sort of conceded 330 runs. Uh, you must remember that those are 60 over 
uh, ODI game. After an opening stand of 182, Australia suddenly were three for 191 when Ian Chappell was bowled by Kaluperama. Yeah, that was one of my greatest wickets I have ever taken. Uh, I can remember Ian Chappell before that, before that two balls before prior to that he hit me to be wicket for four runs, and uh, I was packed with the offside onside uh, field, and I knew that he was trying to cut me on the offside, so I bowled it to flatter and straighter, and he went to cut me and it went straight and got him bowled. I was still to get that wicket. <laughs> Well, it was a very tall order. 328 was a tall order, but uh, uh, we decided to play as aggressively as the bowling would allow us and uh, try and get uh, closer to the target and maybe at the end, uh, you know, have a real bang. We thought we'll give it the best shot uh, by batting uh, positively and aggressively. We were facing for the first time uh, uh, two more sort of famous fast bowlers in the world and they were almost the fastest at that time Thompson and, and Lily Sunil Vettimuni and, um, um, and Ranjit Fernando um, batted extremely well those two you know faced most of the bowling of Lily and Thompson when I went in there I had few overs to face of Thompson and Lily not that the uh, as you know that they were uh, they could bowl 12 overs those days there were 60 overs the tournament was 60 overs there were no restrictions of bouncers and I must say there were no helmets as well. I got 30 runs in about 31 balls. And uh, you won't believe that I was stumped for Ashley Manette trying to get more runs. I mean, the uh, the main part of that 50 odd runs, even though I got 30 against with Sunil, I had the, uh, the opportunity of facing uh, a medium fast bowler and, and a spinner, which we are you know more used to uh, playing in Sri Lanka. We were going well. Uh, we had gone up to something like 150 for two and uh, we were keeping a good scoring rate as well. Uh, Dulip Mendis got a shortish ball and he was ready to cut it. But Thompson was a bowler who used to cut the ball off the pitch and he would come back on the forehead of the right hand. And Mendis, uh, being the Mendis he was, who would fear nothing, uh, was ready to uh, bash him. When the ball cut back and hit him on the forehead, even before Mendes could move the bat, Dennis Chamugam and I, from the balcony, we were in, we ran out. When I went in, his eyeballs were turning. He was looking into the sky. And so all we could do is for Dennis and I to lift him up. And the two players had to carry him all the way back to the pavilion. Unfortunately for us, uh, Thompson fell, uh, Sonil Vettamuni and Dulip Mendes together. And both Michael and I had to go in at that stage uh, and to really settle down against that type of bowling, it takes some time. We ended up by getting uh, 270 or 80 runs, 76 runs, I can't remember the exact numbers, but uh, for losing only four wickets. And this was also after we had had two major uh, casualties. I think uh, hadn't we suffered those two injuries when the batsmen were going well, we probably would have got uh, much closer to that total. Sri Lanka's first World Cup campaign elicited a range of emotions. Sunil Wetamuni, making his one-day international debut against Australia, became the first Sri Lankan to score 50, and while a gallant showing against Australia demonstrated Sri Lankan cricket was steadily coming of age, its spiritual leader, Michael Tassira, retired from the international stage. In 1958, we were very much an amateur team. We were also an amateur team in the uh, early 70s, but at least by then we had played more cricket. So I think Australia came here and played a series, the West Indies played a series. So we were more tuned and uh, probably the standard got better as it went along. In 1976, Intakaba Lam led an imposing Pakistan team which included Zahir Abbas, Javad Miandad, Imran Khan and Safraz Nawaz. Led by Anur Tenakon, the Sri Lankans took the honours in two 40-over matches. That Pakistan tour was at a time when Sri Lanka was uh, just aspiring to be a full member. If you take the two limited over games, they were very low-scoring games, if I remember right. Uh, and uh, in the first game, uh, we won uh, that game by 
uh, I think uh, 22 runs or something like that. And um, uh, the main scorer for us in that game was Roy Dias, who got a very useful 30. In the second game, we pulled that game off by just two wickets. Again, a low-scoring game. In that game, uh, the main scorer for us was Dulip Mendis. Uh, coming on to the um, the three-day unofficial uh, test match that we played, uh, we were able to get the better of uh, Pakistan, mainly due to a brilliant all-round performance by Lalit Kaluperma. Uh, I think uh, when it came to our turn to bat at the end of the first day, because we bowled Pakistan out for a relatively low score, and when it came to... Uh, the end of the first day, we lost something like four wickets uh, for less than 20 runs. And uh, uh, it was towards close of play and I sent Lalit as the night watchman. I had to face about four balls. Uh, it was Imran who was bowling. I managed to survive that day. Uh, the next day he batted brilliantly and uh, ended up scoring 96 runs. and. Uh, put on a valuable partnership with David Hine. Then started the next day and uh, continued my normal way and ended up by getting 96 runs. I got out by hooking a short pitch ball, which I got a lot of runs by hooking, and eventually got caught, caught behind. In the second innings, again, uh, uh, Pakistan uh, batted and uh, got something uh, a little about 200 runs and uh, we had to make uh, something like 190 runs and we kept uh, losing wickets fairly regularly and the game was getting very tight and once again uh, Lalit Kaluperuma who was more recognized for his off spin bowling uh, ended up scoring a 50 not out. So I was 49 not out and one run to get and Roy was facing, I went and told Roy, the first opportunity was to get that single and we might win this match. He said, all right, and he played down that uh, over and he gave a maiden to, I think, uh, um, Sai Rabbar. And uh, next over, first ball, I got the run and we won the match and I was 50 not out. It was a great match for us. And. Uh we were able to pull that game off by four, four wickets. So uh, that was uh, quite a victory at that time. Which uh, meant that we were very fast developing. And the key players in that was uh, the spinners. There was uh, the spinners who uh, we had Ajit De Silva, DS De Silva and Kalu Perma, who bowled exceedingly well. And uh, the emergence of the spinners made sure that uh, Sri Lanka were also ready to get teams out. And of course, there was Tony Opath. I think the only uh, drawback was we didn't really have a fast bowler to uh, uh, sort of uh, help or support Tony Opath as a fast medium bowler. The MCC, captained by Tony Gregg, toured in February 1977, and Anura Tenacon batted for nearly five hours for 97 to avert defeat in the four day match. He then led his team to a three-wicket win in the 30-over encounter. The mere fact that we were able to get the better of uh, the MCC side uh, who toured Sri Lanka uh, in 1977 in a limited over games uh, gave us a lot of confidence to face the 1979 World Cup. Ranjit Fernando, an aggressive opening batsman and long-serving deputy to Tanakon, ended his outstanding career with an impressive match-saving innings in the second unofficial test with the West Indies in February 1979. Sri Lanka uh, were preparing for the 1979 World Cup and uh, I was desperately keen uh, to do well in that uh, series. I, uh, together with Roy Dias, we put up a partnership which enabled us to save that game. So uh, that spurred us to uh, sort of uh, look for better things in our cricket in the future. The second World Cup tournament in 1979 was also played in England and the Sri Lankans were led by Anura Tenakon. When we went for the first World Cup, uh, our experience in limited over cricket was rather limited because uh, limited over cricket had just uh, started in the mid-60s and our exposure against foreign teams was uh, very, very limited. 
Anura Penicone top scored with an undefeated 59 against New Zealand in the opening match of the tournament, but injury cost him the privilege of leading Sri Lanka to its first World Cup win against India in the following match. It was Bandula Vanapura who had the distinction of engineering the 47-run success so enabling an associate member to claim bragging rights over a full member for the first time at a World Cup. Since we have played against India earlier, I mean, they were not strangers to us. So therefore, the, uh, the, we had that advantage as well. I think mainly, uh, they were a bit, uh, the Indian team was a bit unsettled. I mean, that's one of, one of the main reasons why we won. But after winning only, we realized how important it was for us to gain uh, test status. Regrettably, Tenacon also was absent when Sri Lanka claimed the inaugural ICC trophy over Canada in the battle of the two associate members which qualified for the World Cup. Anura Tenacon, gentleman cricketer and the most prolific batsman of the pre-test era, retired after the World Cup campaign. He's narrowly missed the honour of leading his country in its first official test match in 1982. Getting a... 100 against the uh, uh, international cricket team is always uh, something special. Uh, so all the hundreds that I scored against uh, international uh, test playing sides, I consider it to be uh, a good effort. The tour by Australia under Kim Hughes in May 1981 was critical for Sri Lanka's aspirations for full membership of the ICC. They, they had a problem with the Kerry Packer in, 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 in the World Series, in the World, in the world Cricketing setup. Team which came under Kim Hughes uh, came in because with the, some of the seniors joining Kerry Packer series. So it was not a main team which came, to, came over here. It was, you know, a, a bit of a, a, a second team as such. And then uh, the, uh, the ODI we played, of course, I got 106 runs. Sri Lanka continued their impressive performance and had the better of the Australians in the three-day match. I uh, bowled well with Ajit Disul, of course, my spinning partner. Uh, I think most of the uh, overs were bowled between, uh, shared by Ajit and me. And uh, I got five wickets in the second innings. And I think first innings, so I got three wickets. Sri Lanka toured England in 1981, determined to produce impressive performances while its application for full membership was again being reviewed by the ICC. We were waiting to see whether they will accept us as a test playing country. And then uh, the, uh, we were quite stable and we were quite comfortable with, uh, with what we were doing over there. We had to keep what, the only thing is that we, we were supposed to perform uh, reasonably well uh, to keep the, uh, our, our case going at the ICC level. So I think that there was no pressure, pressure as such, but we knew it was going to be important. Uh, the meeting was going to be very important for Sri Lanka. We had our normal, we played our normal game and we impressed them and they were very happy with our performance. The president of the Border Control for Cricket in Sri Lanka, Gamani Disanayaka, convinced the ICC at a meeting in July 1981 that his country would provide the necessary infrastructure and services required of a test match nation. To the unbridled delight of the country, Sri Lanka was formally admitted as a full member of the ICC on the 21st of July, 1981. You're playing a match against uh, uh, Yorkshire, if I may recollect, and then we got a call coming in saying that we have, uh, I think it was on the, on the second day or third day, uh, and we got the call from, uh, from, from uh, the cricket board, the representative, Nisal or Mr. Garmin Sanayaka, saying that they have accepted us as a test playing country. So, I mean, from that day onward, I mean, we were quite relaxed. The tension which we had even earlier, uh, being worried about the uh, admission uh, went away and then we were quite uh, quite happy and we were waiting to come back because we were coming back uh, as a team which had got IC status. The Sri Lankan cricketers rejoiced at the news that Sri Lanka was at last a full member of the ICC and looked forward to playing test match cricket. We were given about £3.10 shillings to be taken and not the uh, the board also didn't have much uh, money to pay but I think we, we were, we, were uh, we had a dinner celebrating not a, not a huge one Sri Lankans everywhere were indebted to the island's past cricketers and administrators who never lost heart at the repeated rejections of the applications for test match status. They doggedly, admirably, continued to celebrate the game in the right spirit and ensured the standard of play was always improved. The people who gave Sri Lanka cricket the leg up since the World War II, Mr. P. Saravanmuthu, who was responsible for the Pisara Stadium, 
They have dominated the Sanayaka, our minister, a very charismatic, charismatic gentleman, Mr. Raja Mahendran, who gave, started professional cricket and gave employment to talented cricketers who are unemployed. At the same time, we had the municipal commissioner, Mr. B. A. Jayasinghe, gave so many openings as, as play, playground instructors to cricketers who, had, who were talented and couldn't find a job. I would say that even in the late 50s and 60s, our cricket was of a pretty high standard. We should have got a status in the mid-60s when we had uh, a lot of uh, players playing cricket in England, uh, like um, Clive Inman, Stanley Jassing, Gamini Gunasena, to name a few. Uh, we have made a couple of applications. The, the subject was brought up at the ICC. But I think they are due to few reasons. Like, first thing was the facility that we have in Sri Lanka. Second one, uh, maybe they were, they were talking about the standard that we were talking about, but in 1979 when we beat India, that came out. And then there was a, those days there was another thing called uh, guarantee money to be paid to a foreign country. We had a lot of restrictions in Sri Lanka about foreign exchange. Sri Lanka played its first test match against England at Pisara Stadium from 17th of February 1982. Uh, but I must say throughout, the design was very much reasonable. And then we were first time put into a, a guest house as a team and we were provide transport to the matches. I mean, these are the improvements we had. In England decided to play their first match at, in Sri Lanka in February 1982 to celebrate Sri Lanka's admission as a full member of ICC. The match was played at the Oval and I personally had quite a lot to do because I was in charge of the arrangements for extending the accommodation and for organizing the match. The last slot was between Anurag Singh and uh, Lalit Kalupurma. We had to decide in the morning with the uh, chairman selection committee. Since uh, Lalit and uh, uh, Ajit had been, you know, bowling well, playing well for Sri Lanka performing, we thought of going with spin and Anurag was left out. I had to struggle to get my place because they played few trial matches. And those trial matches, I have impressed the selectors. We always dreamt of playing test cricket and um, being able to play in the first test match was certainly a very, very special occasion. I'm sure, you know, it would have been all very tense because it was, in a way, we were going into uncharted territory. So, um, but I, I was very glad that I was there. It's a very special moment for everybody to play for your country in the first test, in our test match. We got a goal, gold coin specially made, uh, minted for, for the first test match, and then uh, I was handed over that coin and we went, walked in there. Uh, of course, we were, uh, from the beginning, you know, team discussion we have had, uh, the, uh, we decided that if we win the toss, we are going to bat. I mean, there's no two words, even though I was the uh, opening batsman in, in the side, and then uh, due, to, due to the selections, also I got the opportunity of opening bowling with Asad the Dimil on the other side. So going to the toss, we wanted to win the toss, and uh, of course we won the toss and we elected to bat. When going to bat, of course I was under the pressure because I was going to face the first ball, the uh, and then you know the, I was a bit worried if I get out in the first ball there'd be another record. I managed to survive the first ball and get the first run as well. It went past the gully and the third field, I think, the, and got the first run. So uh, I didn't, you know, click. At that time that I scored the first run, of course I was a normally opening batsman batting with Siddharth. It was a change and it was mainly a mental change of you know thinking knowing that you've got to play a longer sort of game uh, but we adapted quite fast you must not forget the people who played for sri lanka in the past and then if they did not sacrifice at that time the cricket wouldn't have gone on and all like this so we had cricket because they played for nothing they, they have lived, went a lot of you know went through a lot of hardship they sacrificed a lot so likewise, you know, we did our part and then ultimately today you find that they, they, are, they are quite comfortable. When you talk about history, it doesn't belong to one or two people. It belongs to all people who played up to now from the beginning up to date. So I think the, we must be thankful to the people who played before us. My, my thanks to all the people uh, who contributed towards keeping this game going in Sri Lanka for many, many years before us. The foundation laid by these cricketers enabled Sri Lanka to gain test match status and to compete boldly with test match countries that boasted a rich history and culture. Within 14 years of unconditionally joining the international cricket community, 
Sri Lanka won the World Cup and the pearl of the Indian Ocean sparkled like never before.